Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn and you're on Gut Plus Science. This podcast is on a mission to increase engagement at work. And on this show, we equip CEOs and people first leaders of all levels to make impact. Let's get to it. Hey, Gut Plus Science listeners, I am thrilled to have a corporate social responsibility, ESG, and aspirational business expert join Gut Plus Science to inspire us and equip us with the information and ideas we need to build a meaningful business around our mission and for our people. Introducing my friend, Dora Lutz. Dora, take it away. Hey guys, Dora here. Have you noticed how many Netflix documentaries are out right now that talk about unethical business behavior as though it's something that we could have or should have seen coming? Spoiler alert, we probably should have. I can think of the show on Abercrombie, on Boeing, Fire Festival, Enron. At my last count, and you know I counted, there were over 30 episodes. But no, I haven't watched them all yet. Where things get really interesting for me is how similar the themes are, regardless of the industry or the time frame in which these corporate scandals happened. There are some common things that you hear from the people that they're interviewing. You hear them say things like, well, I didn't think that my contribution would have made a difference, either for good or for bad. Or, well, we thought we'd fix it along the way. Or, oh man, we had no idea how deep the issue ran. Or my favorite, Well, we didn't know our customers wanted something else. And not only do we have the benefit of hindsight to see what happened with these organizations, but we are all living firsthand through a period of time where shifting expectations for our businesses are front and center every day. Coming out of COVID, working through the great reevaluation, we know that employees are looking for more from their employers. We know that consumers want businesses to be aligning with their values. And we know that communities are striking back if they do not like the businesses that are coming into their communities. It seems to me that a lot of leaders really now understand how employees want to engage in meaningful work. And if you listen to my last episode, what that does for the bottom line. But sometimes business leaders are still hesitant to believe that customers are actually paying attention to their brand or that they are willing to make different purchasing decisions based off of positive impact or even sustainability. So let's talk about the statistics that are out there about consumer behavior. 86% of customers expect a business to address social issues. Now, I know that one strikes fear deep in the hearts of many CEOs, not only because You haven't necessarily been prepared for the best way to do that, but also because we really have to be careful in addressing social issues in a way that is extremely bipartisan. And while I know that feels impossible, it is not impossible. There are ways to make sure that you are taking a stand towards the social issues that are appropriate for your business while remaining nonpartisan. In addition to that, 80% of consumers say that they consider sustainability when they make their purchasing decision. So not only does it factor into what products or services they are going to buy, 70% of those individuals say that they will pay a premium for sustainable products. Now, personally, I don't think that that premium is going to last forever. In fact, I think sustainability is going to become a basic expectation, almost a commodity. So I don't know that those premiums for sustainability are going to last for long. But we do know that consumers will continue to be making those purchasing decisions. And so if we want to remain relevant, we have to be thinking about it now. Lastly, we know that investors value sustainability. 
after Tesla was booted from the S&P's ESG fund, its stock dropped 6% on the same day, and it still has not recovered. But I recognize, I know that engaging and understanding sustainability issues is still challenging for CEOs. So what can you do if you are committed to being a more ethical organization, but you're scared of creating controversy or divisiveness or greenwashing, if that's part of your concern? Well, the good news is that there are easy steps you can take within your organization. And if you are working on an ESG strategy, they'll help you go further. If you are a small organization that is not thinking about ESG yet, they are still actionable steps that will help you begin moving towards this idea of social impact and sustainability without taxing your organization to do something that it is not prepared or able to, to bring to life. So the first thing that you can do is review your sense of servanthood. Who is your organization seeking to serve and why? Secondly, if you set forth some goals for what that kind of impact would look like, how would you measure them? If somebody came to you and said, I don't think you're really doing X, Y, Z, how would you prove that you are doing good work in the world? And even if you're not ready to implement a plan yet, you can start benchmarking. You can create an environment where your employees can thrive. If you follow my content and you have not yet completed a pay equity assessment, then please stop everything you are doing and do that right now. Review your Glassdoor reviews, your Indeed reviews. Listen to what people are telling you. And if there's something ugly that you don't like, you must address it. You can complete a net promoter score survey and ask people what they think of something that you have said or a social issue that you have tiptoed into and listen to that feedback. More times than not, the feedback is that the organization didn't do enough. Complete a risk management assessment. There are third parties you can find who will be able to help you understand the compliance issues within your organization and not only do the assessment, but take action. Lastly, tell the story of your efforts with candor and honesty. People are not expecting perfection, but they are expecting progress. I know that thinking about social impact is a new way of thinking for many, many of us. And in fact, even last month, a fellow business owner asked me, I am struggling with the idea that I should tell people about my corporate philanthropy. I don't want people to buy my product because I'm doing good work because that feels, that feels really manipulative to me. Can you help me change my perspective? And at the end of the day, what I told him is people aren't going to buy your product if they don't want to. Our goal is to increase the perceived value of our product so that our customers prefer it. And so we're looking to increase what they understand and the way that they value our products. We seek to innovate more so that we can meet the needs of more individuals and to increase the benefits that we are bringing to everybody in our ecosystem. It's not easy, but it's way better than ending up as a cautionary tale on Netflix. Oh, and one more thing. You can probably tell by listening to these podcasts that I am really passionate about the opportunity for business to make the world a better place. But for this work to really take root, we need everybody in our organization to understand how this work drives the bottom line, to think about ways that they can create impact regardless of their role within the organization, and to feel inspired and empowered to think about their purpose and the way that they can make the world a better place. To learn more about how I can get your team up to speed on the power of social impact, or ESG, visit giving-spring.com. I look forward to seeing you live. We just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.